All right, so today I'm going to show you the basics of how to take a hot tub pump out. This particular one didn't have the keepers on it, but you should have slice keepers on it. If you don't, you need to cut a pipe and add a little piece of uh, air hose or something. But you would close your slices completely, lock them in, and hopefully this will hold water. If not, I'll have to take the water out of the tub. And the next thing you would do is take the bolts out. In this particular case, this thing used a 7 16 wrench. Um, so you're going to need, in this particular case, because this pump is in the back, I don't want to pull the cable from the back to the front, so we're going to have to take the cable loose. So you're going to need a quarter inch nut driver. You're going to need oil filter pliers, in this case 7 16 but it can vary. You're going to need a flat screwdriver to take the ground loose. And you're going to need something to cut the bleeder hose and to put a, uh, to stop the water. So in this case I use a bad 30 amp fuse, but you'll have to find something or use something like this. I have pinch pliers like you use on radiators in cars. So I'm going to make this happen. I've loosened a lot of this stuff to go ahead and make this a little faster. I don't like how this slice is feeling. I've already loosened, I took the, the two nuts off the back. We'll take the two nuts off the front here. Loosen them where I can remove them with my finger. Now I'm going to take my knife, I'm going to cut this. And we're going to lose some water, there's nothing that you can do about it. That tub is actually still running, but I'm going to cut this right here this bleeder. I don't like how much water I'm losing here. It makes me think that my slices are not holding very well. When it's still chilly, and when it's chilly, None of your pipes are very flexible, so it's hard to even get this fuse down inside this pipe to stop the water. I'm going to squeeze it in the pipe squeezer. I ain't doing jig jack. This stuff's just so cold that it's not flexible enough for that to even work. Finally got it in there. Ooh, it did not want to go. So that's a good sign that the uh, there's no water coming out, so it means these slices are holding pretty good. So I'm going to pull this pump out and fix it. Now I'm going to have to go to the other side and get the wire out. Alright, just know that the pump is not usually on the other side of the tub from the wiring because that's usually not an issue. But in this particular case it was. And this one is stuck. And so I'm going to fix it. And for a tutorial on that, look for waterway pumps. And I have plenty of information on that. Alright, so I worked on that other pump and I could not fix it. It was too damaged. The bearing was completely locked up in it. The shaft was destroyed. So I had this other pump. This is actually a different brand. The other one was a waterway executive. This is an XP2E Aquaflow. Similar everything. 
as far as specs on it and all that kind of got good stuff. But the one difference is uh, the placement of this. The waterway is a hair higher and a hair further out, but you see this is all flexible pipe, so I was able to use it in place of it. So the only thing I have left, I put the I put the, the wiring back in the back. I put the mounted the, the pump. I got it all in place. The only thing I have left is hooking up this bleeder and then of course making sure that there's no leaks and that it works. But I'm going to warm this pipe this bleeder's using just a little bit because it's not being very flexible. But the first thing I did was this particular brand does use a, uh, a clamp. Most of them do not use a clamp, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the clamp because it's there. And it's generally suction and water weight, so it's generally not an issue. And I am going to glue it. But before I do anything, I'm going to warm it. Just make sure that you don't allow the vapors of the glue to hit the the heat gun because it will blow up very very uh, flammable but all I'm going to do is warm this up a little bit to make it flexible I'm going to put some glue glue around the um, the bar that I already have installed I'm going to pull this and I'm going to get a little water. I'm going to do it really fast. And if you warm it, it'll slip right on there really easy. And then I'm going to open my slice valves. All right, so when we open our service valves, we're going to listen for air. Didn't hear any air. That's good. If you hear air, close it immediately because you have a, a leak. And I've got keepers that I'm going to put here. I'll get a keeper for the other side. I had, had one handy. So I'm going to go plug this jewel in and power it up to see what happens. Stay tuned. So I had to do a little little bleeding by jogging it off and on a couple times, but she is up and running now. So that is how you take a pump out and put a pump in, just the basics. <laughs>